Hello and welcome to Science Unscripted. It's Connor here. And Gabe. And have you ever been in public on, on a train or sitting on a bench at the mall? Someone <laughs> sits next to you and uh, pulls out their phone and starts, I don't know, listening to a podcast or watching a film with the sound on? It's, it's horrible. Uh, I'll talk later about my experience with that in Italy. But before I do that and waste your time... I want to take you, or we're going to take you, to the researcher who has looked at how to stop that. How do you stop terrible public behavior that you hate? There's, there's a how way. How do you prevent antisocial behavior? There are a couple of very important lessons that we're going to learn right now from Anna Tyrion. Science unscripted. Hi, my name is Anna Tyrion. I am a behavioral scientist and social psychologist. And I'm going to talk about some research that I conducted with some colleagues while I was studying at the University of Bath, looking at the role of bystanders in social confrontations. And Anna, what was the social norm that you were looking at in, in that research? So because we conducted these studies during the pandemic in 2020, 2021, the most relevant social norm at the time was social distancing. So we wrote or filmed some scenarios where there was someone breaking a rule and then we looked at the reactions of people. So regardless of whether they were following the rules themselves. So you've, okay, you've got three different scenarios. One where like, let's say Gabe has broken the rules. One where I confront Gabe and I'm like, hey man, you should not have done that. And then it's, but it, but it's, no, I do that in every scenario. I it's confront about him. what the, the, what the bystand, bystanders, bystanders say to Connor who has confronted Gabe breaking the rules. Is that right? Yes. So let's say there are three more people in the room with you, and then they either stay silent, they change the subject, or they say, yeah, Connor, you were right. Silent, change the subject, or they support me. What effect does yeah. that have? Do each of those three have? So um, we saw that when a bystander support a confronter, it really strengthens the effect that they have. It's showing, yeah, we don't tolerate that kind of behavior here. That's not okay. But when there's either a silence or a change in subject, it actually didn't matter which one, it weakens the confrontation because it suggests that maybe they don't all agree. And in some cases, actually weakened it so much that it was as if the confrontation hadn't happened at all. Wow. As if okay. no one had so, said anything. So it's not just that there's a difference between if I confront Gabe on breaking the rules and somebody either supports or doesn't support or changes the subject, it's that my confrontation is kind of nullified unless somebody else supports me. That's what your data seems to show. So we did three studies and in two of those studies, we saw that it was completely undermined by that lack of support. And in one study, it wasn't quite undermined, but it was a significant difference. So, but so that does show that there is a risk of completely uh, completely undermining a confrontation if you don't support it. Meaning that it's, it, it's, it's completely irrelevant that Connor stands up and confronts it? It's, it's as if he didn't even stand up at all? Or even, even worse, that it, that it helps to erode social norms or, or, or convinces the people who are watching it that the rule that was broken, maybe, maybe it's okay actually, to break that actually, rule. Actually, Gabe was right. Yeah, he yeah. should have done that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're worried about, that then that leads to what we call norm erosion, where people over time stop adhering to that social norm because, well, apparently it's normal to behave like this. I would like to focus on one social norm that is being destroyed right in front of me every single day. And it's one of the, it's a phone. And I think a lot of people, it, but it's not people looking at their phones. It's watching videos or something maybe even our podcast, with the volume on mm. in public, in very yeah. public places. This is on the train. This is on the tram. This is in restaurants. This is in airplanes. I, I don't know why this is happening. And this is not people who accidentally have the sound on like I had before. I, I had to hide I, your phone. I threw my phone over there. This is people who are, uh, they're, they're well aware that the sound is on. They, they're just watching videos or listening to stuff, podcasts, and, and don't care. Yeah, about the people around them that they're in their own solipsistic world where nobody else is there. They just they don't care. And your study suggests 
if I stand up and say something to those people, it's going to be useless or meaningless. Unless. Unless I have a second party loudly agree with me. Not necessarily, because we did also have data that showed that even a single confronter can make a difference. And there are, there are lots of studies that do show this as well. It's more to keep in mind. It's always the most important thing is that step one, be the person who says something about it. This is more if you are not that first person, don't think you're off the hook. So it's more if you are the bystander, show your support. Don't leave that confronter hanging because it could undermine them. But there's a lot of social awkwardness in, in, the, in the scenario that you just described. How, is your is or is one of the messages for people watching this right now? Don't be afraid, you because it's really important if you see someone confronting uh, idiotic behavior, like <laughs> listening to podcasts or watching videos with the sound on in public, to say something. It's it, it right. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it is really awkward, and maybe it helps to just think, well, if someone else has been brave enough to say something, then the least you could do is show that you agree with them, because otherwise you're just leaving them out in the cold. Um, and that is not only um, bad in terms of p the potential norm erosion, but it's also just not a very nice thing to do. One thing that scares me, if, it, if I hear someone Watch it. They're watching videos. The, the The sound is blaring. One thing that scares me is the same type of person who's doing that may be more inclined to beat the living crap out of me for confronting them. And I guess I, I don't know if this is part of your study. How much does fear play into not doing anything? Are, are people for the first confronter and the and, and the bystander as well, right? Yeah. Do we? Is there any data that suggests we're, we're right to be scared of that situation, or does it does it usually work out fine? So that's not something we looked at directly, but there is a lot of research on the bystander effect, right? Like all the reasons why the more people who are present who see something bad happening, the less likely it is that any one person will say something. In a way, it's a social norm to not rock the boat as well. So when you're trying to um, defend an important social norm, you're also kind of going against the social norm of not um, making a fuss. Um, so sort of getting, pushing past that to talk to somebody, to confront someone in public is hard and it is awkward. And there are situations where it may just not be safe. And we're totally not saying go run up to someone who might pull out a knife. If it's not safe, it's not safe. Anna, you study the, or have studied and done research on the breakdown of social norms in real time. What is a social norm, a, a, a rule that's being broken every day or almost every day right in front of your eyes that bothers you and are you confronting people about it? So it's actually really funny that you mentioned that example of people listening to things or watching things loudly on public transport because I had something um, like that just before Christmas where I was on a really busy train at like six in the morning trying to uh, get somewhere and um, there was someone watching a talk show or a sort of game show on his phone really loudly and I could tell that other people like oh god it's six o'clock can you not and having done this research I was like well I should practice what I preach so I leaned over and I said sir could you please wear some headphones because we can all hear what you're watching and he was very grumbly about it and he said, well, I can barely hear it myself. And I said, well, please, we can. So could you please turn it down or wear headphones? And he said, well, uh, but then I can't hear it. I said, like, that's what headphones are for. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then just when he got off the train, I got a very grumpy, Merry Christmas. Oh. So <laughs> that, that's uh, definitely one I see every day. What, what did the people around you, what did they do when you confronted this grumbly man? <laughs> nothing nothing and then a word of support afterwards or none no but this is london remember people don't really <laughs> speak to each other in public um but so as good as it is to afterwards say actually i i agreed with you there because that's privately nice for someone to hear that others people other people did agree with them um we do want to encourage people to stand up in the moment and support people because the sort of social signal you're sending to everyone else um, is not achieved if you wait until afterwards to say, oh, by the way, I agreed. Yeah. Well, you should have said something. 
And does your research say that it's worth the fight, that social norms, that we can stop them from, yeah. from erosion? Well, not all social norms are created equal. Like, I don't think anybody was hurt by the erosion of norms around table manners in the last 50 years. But when it comes to pro-social norms and in, in during, you know, during the pandemic, during lockdowns, trying to stick to social distancing was a pro-social thing to do. It's about respect to other people and trying to keep people safe and not harming each other. Um, when it comes to norms like that, um, there are consequences to the erosion of them, like the way we treat each other. For the people hearing your message right now for the first time, what is your message? What is your tip? What would you like people out there listening to you to do in the future? So we want people to be aware of the effect that they can have as a bystander. So firstly, do your best to be the person who calls out bad behavior, but we know you can't always be that person. So if you see someone else who's being brave and stepping in, don't be tempted to hang back because, well, they've got it in hand or I will stay neutral because staying neutral, as we show, isn't neutral. It's damaging. So show your support for confronters you agree with. Science Unscripted. And that was Anna Tyrion speaking to us from London. The title of her study, The Sound of Silence, Importance of Bystander Support for Confronters in the Pre Prevention of Norm Erosion. What have you learned? Well, I've learned, yeah, I've learned to, that it's correct to stand up and say something, which I've done recently. Um, and that you need bystander support. And that fits into something I referenced at the very beginning about Italy. And that's that Italy, f f wonderful place to visit, but the war against cell phone or, or smartphone noise has been lost there. I'm, I'm convinced of that. I wrote enough public transportation. Th that social norm has eroded? That social norm has vanished. I, su I saw the future and it was Italy. And I did not, I, either I just wasn't familiar with it, but I don't know. I, I, I hated it. Okay, I so if the, I get on a, I if I get on a train that, in Milan, what do I hear? Oh, I don't know. I was in Milan. I can't really speak for Where Milan. were you? Uh, Rome and then down in the south. And it, <laughs> seemed, it seemed like it become socially normalized to sit here and just watch videos with, with the sound on. I hate that. I don't want that world. I'm going to fight against it. And so what I, what I learned was um, you need by, bystander support. And of course, in Italy, I, I would not have had it. Nobody would have had my back. This is some foreign guy. What right. the hell is he talking about? Yeah. Speaking in English, that wouldn't have worked. But what we learned from Anna is either be the first person to stand up and say something, or, good Lord, if someone stands up... Has the courage. Show support for that person. Back them. Get yeah. their back. That guy's right. Otherwise, That woman, that woman is right. Yeah. I agree with that. Otherwise, them. that person standing up, that might even be... You're undermining not only the... the you're, you're, you're contributing to the erosion of the norm. You're also undermining... The them. act that person is standing yeah, they, up. Oh, that's they're not, not gonna, they're easy. They're not going to do that ever, ever again. again. Yeah, <laughs> if people if people don't support them, that's what we've learned. We love hearing your stories. Uh, post them in the comments. Send us an email su at dw.com, and let's uh, stop the erosion of social norms together.